Farmers have been trying for ages to grow crops that we like to eat, but bugs don't. That's one of the goals in applying genetic engineering to plants, along with bigger fruits and vegetables that require less work to produce. And whether you know it or not, sugar beets grown in Wyoming are mostly grown from genetically engineered seeds. Opponents are trying to change that, as producer Deb Hammonds reports. The sugar beets are about 52% of the sugar that's produced in the U.S. Sugar beet crop has always been important to the Bighorn Basin in the state of Wyoming. It's most important because we not only raise the product, the sugar beet itself, but we process it to the, to the final product for consumption. So I think that's very important as far as employment goes. We have additional employment on the farm, plus employment at the factories. The state of Wyoming grows about 30,000 acres of sugar beets on an annual basis. Uh, we enjoy three different factories, uh, one in Torrington, Wyoming, the one here in Worland, and then one in Lovell, Wyoming. Ten northern tier states grow sugar beets, a million acres of them. These states' cooler winter climates raise sugar content and protect stockpiled beets waiting to be processed. Today in the United States, 95% of the sugar beets are grown from genetically engineered Roundup Ready seeds. Able to withstand spraying by the herbicide Roundup, these seeds allow farmers to kill weeds without harming their crops. Dr. Abdel Mesbah, director of the University of Wyoming Agriculture Research Center at Powell, began growing trial test plots of the modified seeds in 1997 and 98. I look always for negative and positive. Will I be able to control these weeds or I won't be able to control them? I'm going to hurt my crop or I'm not going to hurt my crop. That's why we call it an experiment. There were three things that happened when we introduced Roundup Ready. One was the Roundup Ready gene. Um, the other was uh, uh, improved insecticide seed treatment. And the other thing was new genetics. And so we saw a yield bump from all of that all at once. With Roundup Ready sugar beets, average yields in Wyoming increased dramatically from 21 tons of beets per acre to 27. Labor, fuel, and fertilizer costs were also reduced for farmers. Yes, we pay a technology fee, but including that, I will say we reduce the cost of uh, producing sugar beet in, uh, in our area by at least 40 percent. Uh, Sugar beet seeds are grown in two-year cycles in Oregon, where the genetically engineered Roundup Ready plants have come into conflict with organic farmers and environmental groups. Those groups sued to block growing of the seeds, which they claimed could contaminate their crops. The courts ordered the U.S. Department of Agriculture to produce an environmental impact statement which the agency said they would not be able to complete until May 2012. Meanwhile, seed decisions needed to be made by growers. For our area, we need some seed varieties that have what we call disease packages, which are have some resistance to curly top, or better word, it would be tolerance to curly top, uh, some of the rot organisms that are inherent in the soil. But that process starts uh, a year in advance in that uh, the seed is produced in uh, Oregon, uh, for the most part, the year before it's planted. In August 2010, the federal court banned the planting of genetically engineered sugar beet seeds. In December, the court ordered the removal of sugar beet seed plants from the ground in Oregon. Two months later, in February, the USDA announced that Roundup Ready seeds under closely controlled conditions could be planted the spring of 2011. Immediately, opponents of the genetically engineered seeds filed suit to stop the new USDA order. We start planting in, in April, uh, about the first week in April, usually. As the winter snows melt, the court battles continue. 30,000 Wyoming sugar beet acres wait to be planted.